God is the same today, was the same yesterday, and he is the same forever. Amen? I want to read from Psalm 34, verse 8, which says this, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Amen. How many are grateful to be in the house of the Lord this morning and that we are alive and we still have this, this grace to be to meet as many other people, other churches in the world don't have this benefit of meeting together as most of the, of the, of the congregation. It is a truly a blessing to be here uh, today. So I want to, uh, to be a reminder today that how good, how great God is. We serve a great, magnificent uh, God. And I want us to, remind, to be reminded this morning of this great God that we serve. And the question, I want to ask a question, what comes to your mind when you think about God? Let's pause, let's pause and think, that, think about that for a second. It's a question that is so important because knowing who your God is will determine how you worship, how you pray, and uh, who do you praise, who do you worship. And uh, worship is to give something worth. It's something you give worth to. Praise, we praise something that is greater, that is above us, that is wow, that is uh, impressive or mighty uh, to us. Now, like another translation of the same verse, this translation says, like this, it says it like this. Drink deeply of the pleasures of this God. Experience for yourself the joyous mercies he gives to all who turn to hide themselves in him. We have this great privilege that we are in Christ. And as Paul says, uh, he's not just our, our God, he is our father. He has adopted us into his family. And uh, Romans 8, 15 says it like this. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in, the f in, in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. So we have this great opportunity that Jesus, through his uh, sacrifice, through his resurrection, we are victorious. And he has made us his own. He has... He took us from this, from this world, from the slimy pit, as, as David puts it in Psalm 40, and the slimy, the slimy pit and the mire and the mud and the sin of this world, he plucked us out into his glorious light. Because he is light, we are light in this world. He told us to be salt and light in this world. And when we are in his presence, we are radiant of him. We are shining Jesus as we are supposed to be as Christians. We're supposed to shine Jesus. And Ephesians 1, 1 5 says, uh, sorry, 5 1, be imitators of Christ. And as we are his children, we can call out to him. God has promised, call out and I will answer. I will hear uh, the call. I will, in your distress, call out to me and I will listen. I will, give, I will bring you an answer. So taste and see the goodness of our God. We experience for yourself this great, magnificent God that we serve, his mercies, his grace. We have this great opportunity. In Hebrews it says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Now there is a throne and Jesus, God is sitting on the throne. Now, we, as children, we are uh, of, uh, of royalty, as Peter says. We have uh, this great privilege that we can come boldly to his throne. You see, in a king's presence, not anyone can come into a king's in, uh, in front of a throne. But because we are his, God has brought us in, we are in him, we have this opportunity to come to his, to his throne with boldness and ask for mercy, ask for strength in every situation that uh, arises in our life. It's a great, great privilege that we have through Jesus Christ. And many times we come, we come to Jesus, we come to God, we come to God in prayer, and the problem is we ask God. We just ask and ask, God, give me this, give me that. Please uh, uh, bring me through this, da, 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 all that. We come, ask God. We receive that. Thank you, Jesus. Bye-bye. And that's not the way as, uh, we, we need to be. We need to come to him with our needs, but, and we need to be thankful. As in uh, uh, Paul says in Thessalonians, that to be thankful, be, with thanksgiving, come in your prayers with thanksgiving in every prayer. So we must come to him with thanksgiving. Just because... Uh, we have this, this good thing to end, to end our service with a thanking prayer. That does not mean we are necessarily thankful. So it's important in every prayer, as uh, in Philippians 4, I want to read from that. Philippians 4, verse 6, it says it like this. 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. So in everything, by prayer and petition, come to Christ with thanksgiving. Because being thankful, coming to God with a thankful heart, the peace of God will guard our heart and will guard our minds. So when you are thankful, uh, we don't just thank God for the things we receive. We need to thank him for the things we will receive. Being thankful is, uh, uh, is praying with, with, with thanksgiving shows your faith in God. Like David, many times, he was going through different trials and situations, and he was crying out to God. But he, I love him. Many times, he always ended with the thing, but I will choose to praise you. I know you, uh, uh, I've been through this before. I've been through other things before, and you have brought me out. You have brought me victory. So being thankful, no, knowing that God is a victorious God, and he will bring you through, shows your faith and the victory that you will receive. And... Um, so just thank God. God, I thank you that you bring me through this. I, I thank you. I've been here before. You came through uh, in the past. I definitely, you can come through again. For He is the same. He never changes. And this is such a great, uh, such a great. Um, we have such a great God. And let's not forget that having a thankful heart. It is so crucial to have uh, a peace in our hearts that only comes from from God. Um, we serve an exceptional God, a God that does miracles, a God that is never failing. And this reminds me of the Israelites when they crossed through the Red Sea. They had nowhere else to go. The, the Egyptians were behind them, coming for them, and there was just a Red Sea in front of them. And where else would they go? And um, they walked, they started walking towards the sea, and God parted the waters. We all know this great miracle. Uh, and they walked through on dry, dry ground. And uh, because God made an, ex uh, an exemption, because we, have, we serve an exceptional God. And the Israelites had another encounter, very similar to this. It's in, um, found in Joshua 3, verse, from verse 15, I'll read from there. This is what it says. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carry the ark reach the Jordan and their feet touch the water's edge, the water from the upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam, while the water flowing down to the sea of the Araba was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. That is absolutely, I find absolutely amazing where God did the same, very similar miracle to the old generation, to the parents, uh, when they came out of Egypt. And um, the situation was difficult, as it says. Uh, the water uh, was, um, sorry. It, was, it was a flood stage during the harvest. So the water was so high, it was so deep, it was flowing very, very strong, like, because uh, it was the harvest time. So from all the rain, it was overflowing. The Jordan was overflowing. So the situation may look very difficult, but we serve a God of impossibilities. When things seem impossible, God makes it possible because we serve a God of exception. God comes through even when things go the way we don't want them to go. And we find it so difficult. And uh, we think, God, why this now? And then I think to myself, when things get harder, I say, God, this is your great opportunity to show you are greater. You are so much greater than all of this. Even with this virus, there's many, many things. It's, it's uh, second wave. Many things are coming. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying, God, this is your, a great opportunity for you to show your greatness and your might and your power uh, to this world. And um, I love it that they, didn't, they did not just walk through mud. Where there's water, once you take water away, there's mud, right? They walked on dry ground. So the miracle not in itself is not that the waters parted, is they walked on dry ground, on a highway, I could say, on a, on a footpath. So they walked on dry ground. It's up, I find absolutely amazing that we serve such an amazing and powerful, uh, awesome God. Um, and there is nothing, nothing impossible uh, with God. And 
Uh, many times, I, I, I thought of this. They, God did the, same, the very similar miracle on the Red Sea. That was the story of their fathers. They, I'm sure that the children knew about the story when, Jesus, when God took them to the Red Sea. But it came a time when uh, the generation had passed, after 40 years, when there was time for them to enter Canaan, God did a, a very, very similar miracle just to show his power and his might. Because I believe, I don't want to make it an absolute, but many, many a times, God uh, will bring, it's good that we have stories from the Bible, it's good that we have stories from our parents, from our grandparents, how God worked and how God did so many miracles, signs and wonders, but I believe it's time for our generation to experience the wonders and the, the, the powerful hand of God in our midst, the mighty hand of God. And um, just as in, uh, the apostles prayed in Acts, Acts 4, after they, they healed the, 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 man at the, at the beautiful gate, uh, the, the, the priest came and they took him in and then they let him go eventually and they came to pray in the house and this, this is what they prayed now Lord consider the threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness stretch out your hand to heal and perform miracle signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus after they prayed the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly now we want to see miracle signs and wonders in our generation we want to see uh want to see God do bring healing bring restoration transformation in people's lives and because we serve a God of exception we want to see this God come through for us it's good that we have all these stories it's it's absolutely wonderful but it's so much better when you experience it taste and see that the Lord is good experience for yourself the greatness of God and because we serve a God of exception, people don't just walk on dry ground where there was just water. God made, God made an exception. People don't just walk around a big wall and at the, at the shout, things just, the wall comes tumbling down. People don't go into a fiery furnace and come out with not even smelling like, like smoke. God made an exception because we serve such an exceptional God that always comes through for us in our need. He is a way maker, the miracle worker. He will come through in your situation. So no matter what you may be going through right now, let's rejoice that God is still on the throne. God, uh, nothing catches him by surprise. As we are, so we were very surprised this year with, with, this, with this virus, uh, not God. God knows exactly from beginning to end, nothing Will ever catch him by surprise. So in your situation, even if it seems it's going harder, the flood is lifting up and you think, God, I'm about to drown. That's when God can come through and make a miracle in your life because God will make an exception to his children as we see so many times in the Bible. So let's believe in God. Let's, be, let's have a thankful heart that God is the God that makes a way where there seems no way. He is the God. When man says it's impossible, it is possible with God. So taste and see that the Lord is good. Experience him in every aspect of your life and uh, be strengthened and be encouraged and praise this God that is above any other God. So I'll leave you, I'll leave you with this. We serve an exceptional God, a God that is never failing. Amen.